So happy for the ladies and for all the Bloom and Bloomies activities last weekend. We've been looking forward to that all year, and it was so great to get that kind of turnout. Thank you, ladies, for how you joined all three locations and the many friends that were brought by people who call Heritage home. Uh, we, uh, we know that God is just going to continue to work through that sisterhood. Uh, guys, you're up next in a few weeks. Wings in a War movie. Don't miss it. And we're in the middle of the series that will take us all the way through March. And we started it last week, and it's called Bless. And one of the things that we talked about last week is that bless is history's word for what it means to do something that introduces a little piece of heaven into the life of another person. It is the spectacular that happens in the midst of the regular. And this is so important for us because we uh, who belong to Jesus Expect to be ambassadors of heaven. And when you and I bless a person, we move the mission forward to help other people find and follow God. So it may seem like a small thing, but it's never an insignificant thing. It's super important. And so we want to learn what are those practices? What are the things that we can do that actually hits the mark when it comes to blessing other people? Last week, we began with the word be. And the word B in our little field guide is begin with prayer. I loved last week. And we got to open up a place called John 15 in the Bible and where Jesus talks us through this powerful imagery of us being a branch on him, the one and only vine that can provide and then uh, fruit that grows because of what we do when we bless other people. And our job, we've learned, is to be an excellent middleman. And not try to do Jesus' job, just do our job and stay connected to Jesus and let him grow fruit in and around us. And so uh, I loved last week because then we spent some time praying last week. If you're here, you might remember that. We spent some, some minutes beginning in prayer, just asking God, hey, who do you have in mind for me to reach out to? Who would you like me to bless? What would you like me to do? And then we, didn't, we stopped praying with uh, just ourselves and we started praying with each other. And uh, many of us wrote down a name of a person that we are going to seek to bless this week. How's that going for you? Uh, I want to encourage you to, to stay on that, maybe even set your alarm to continue to pray for that person once a day at the, at the time of your choosing, just to see what God might do. That was B. That was last week. And now we're into L. And L is... Listen, we're going to talk today about what it means to bless people through the power of being a listener. Any of us that grew up as kids listening to our uh, adults, our parents' music from the backseat of the van uh, know what it's like to learn their songs and then sing the songs the way that we heard them for decades until we finally figure out that we're, we've been like singing the wrong lyrics for decades. Jimmy Fallon poked fun at this recently, so I want to show you what we're talking about. Take a look. Now, uh, now I thought I'd share some of my favorite misheard lyrics tweets from you guys. Here we go. The first one is from at Iodes. He says, I want to rock and roll all night and part of every day. <laughs> part of very specific between 11 and 3. I want to rock and roll all night. Look out. There's a little bit. Because the lid is off the rock. Yeah. This one's from that Kimberly's 21. She says, when I was little, I thought the song was Ba, 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 or Ann. My parents' names are Ba, Ba, Ann. I'm glad you're famous. Hear the song. This one is from at OTG2014. She says, uh, I heard if you start me up by the Rolling Stones as in Yugoslavia, you'll never stop. <laughs> <laughs> this one's from Tim Russell. He says, when I was young, I thought the Lion King started with Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's shit, <good>, actually. <laughs> Why not? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, gra- the Groundhog King. Yeah. Pennsylvania. <laughs> Six more weeks of winter. Oh, the time you feel. This one's from 
This one's from at the Boz 623. He says, We've been spending most of our life with the ga with the gangster's paradise. <laughs> Living with the gangster's paradise. <laughs> like the like, but no, those big oh, the funny guys. Yeah, yeah, they went in the carnivals, yeah. The gangster's the guy paradise. Most of his life. <laughs> the gangster's paradise. Yeah, oh, this one's good. This one's from at E. Coltrane UNC. She says, I always thought the Gloria Stefan song was. Elizabeth's gonna get you, Elizabeth's gonna get you, Elizabeth's gonna get you. Room. Jose, 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 oh, one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just, let's just let it be said, we're not the listeners that we think we are. And uh, I, I think that when we talk about listening, like nobody disagrees that listening is important and that everybody has stumbled upon that nugget of wisdom at some point. You've read the blog or you've got the motivational speak. You, you know, if you'll, be, uh, if you'll be a better listener, you'll be a better boss, you know, or if you'll be a better listener, a better listener, it'll, it will change your marriage or, you know. Uh, that, you know, you'll be a better friend or like listening is important. Like, okay, so we understand that. Introductory question is why does listen make the field guide when it comes to our effort to bless other people? And so uh, we're going we're gonna to watch for some patterns in the life of Jesus. We're going to unpackage, uh, we're going to unpack a passage of scripture. It's going to be great. Uh, but the first thing I would like to do uh, in order to really guide us and create some need is to establish the importance of this and, 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 and why, why we're going to devote a whole page to our field, of, of our field guide to this. In a nutshell, it's for this reason. It's because listening means loving in disguise. If you're, if you're writing something down right now, write that. Listening means loving in disguise. Every person that you've ever locked eyes with, hidden away, inside of them, are all the complexities, thoughts, feelings, anxieties, uh, ideas, uh, opinions that are, are driving them along in life, or maybe even holding them back in life. Just look around the room right now. That's true of every person that you've ever seen, that you see. It's, it's happening right now. It's happening just beneath the surface. And it's rare that a person gets full access to everything that lies beneath. It, 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 brings, a, it brings a picture to mind for me uh, of, um, oh gosh, maybe, maybe a year, year and a half ago, I was... I was sitting with my daughter, and in a noisy circus-type house, kind of rare, where it's just me and my daughter. But we're sitting, you know, me and my daughter. We had a quiet moment, and I'll tell you why. I don't think I'll ever forget this. But she uh, she pulled out a, my daughter's young. She pulled out a box, and I could tell it was a special box to her. Uh, it had like a latch on the front, and 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 she opened it up, and she started pulling out and carefully setting out. Uh, these these little these things that she had made. She's an artist, so she's always making stuff. But like, I could tell this was different. These were these uh, these were like tissue flowers with like very multicolored the pipe cleaner stem, you know, kind of thing. And she's laying them out, and it just she was just she was very quiet about it and very deliberate. And uh, I I could tell they were special to her because uh, she liked them. And she thought they were beautiful. Also, uh, I knew that she had made these with her beloved Aunt Carrie, who lives like five hours away, and, and we don't get to see often enough, and, and she's an artist type too, and so there, there's just a lot of depth to this, and I just sat and enjoyed what she was unboxing, and I, what, I guess what never left me was the kind of reverence, you know what I'm talking about, that she had in that moment, that she was just like somber and appreciating all over again. And I just felt, I felt so honored to, uh, that she would share those treasures with me and have that moment. That's the picture I have in mind. When it comes to listening, listening is the blessing that honors those thoughts, those feelings, those anxieties, hopes, fears, dreams, all that stuff that resides inside another person. And doing it with, with eye contact 
and, and a patient, understanding ear. It's, I've experienced from both sides. I've been the talker. I've been the listener in situations where I have felt the gravity of what it means to be heard. I've experienced how when a person, you've experienced this, right? When a person is given space to put their thoughts into words, like unrushed, it, it helps that person take control of some of the chaos that's going on inside of them, right? Right? This is what listening does for people, and that's why author uh, David uh, Augsburger says, uh, being heard is so close, so close to being loved, that for the average person, the two are almost indistinguishable. And you and I are on a mission together, right? You and I are on a mission together to bless people into finding and following God. And so it's important for us to recognize the opportunity that we have. Because listening is a super easy thing to skip. True or false? Sure. Sure. Did you hear what I said? No, I'm not not rubbing it in. I'm more going for the pun. Uh, (laughs) Listening is a super easy thing for us to skip. And it's all too easy for us to just live our lives knowing that there is somebody in the cubicle right next to us. Live our lives knowing there's someone in the apartment you know, right down the hall, and they have a lot going on under the surface because everybody does, and it's precious stuff, and they'll live most of their lives with no one just offering for them to unbox that a little bit and invite them to, to open up. That's the way our society is right now. It's, it's, we're finding it easier and easier to cut that corner. Think about it. The more, the more technology and the more progress, the more noise is filling our ears. The more screens are yanking our attention away from people. The more time-saving inventions that we have, the less patient we've become to just allow people to finish their story. We, we can't even, like, microwave our popcorn without, you know, standing there. We Come on, come on. And then you always punch it open before it's done, like a second or two before. I don't know what that is, but... The more knowledge you and I have access to in this information age, the more confident we become that we've already got all the answers. And so the more closed our ears become to other people. That's us as a society, but you and I are willing to kind of buck against that trend, right? Because you and I are in business. We're in the uh, the business of developing genuine relationships with healthy, excuse me, with heavenly motives. And I want you to know today that business is always going to be good for people who will decide to be a listener. Listeners are always the ones who are offered the trust. Listeners are always the one who leave people feeling loved. So you and I are going to be inspired by three ideas that we get from perhaps the greatest listener ever. It's Jesus. And you're like, you, you always give him every trophy. Yeah, we kind of do. That's how the book ends. But, but let, me be really, let's, let me be really specific about this. Why does Jesus get the title of greatest listener? First of all, it has been said that the opposite of listening is not talking. The opposite of listening is making up your mind what you're going to say as soon as the other person is done. That's the opposite. That's the opposite of listening. Jesus, the way I see it, had that opportunity 100% of the time. If you follow the story of Jesus, you see that he listened to Pharisees and he listened to lepers. He listened to Jews. He listened to Gentiles. He listened to high-ranking officials. He listened to children. Jesus was a listener. He gave ear to people who traveled many a weary mile to get within earshot of Jesus. Jesus listened to people who had no idea who he was when they were talking. That was Jesus. He went to a lot of parties. And I don't think they loved Jesus because he stood on the table and like preached his best sermon all the time. I think they loved Jesus because he told good jokes. And then not only that, but then he said, how about you? You know any jokes? Like Jesus was a listener. For someone who came to earth bearing revolutionary cosmic truths, For someone who came to earth knowing all the answers to all the important questions, the fact that he did any listening at all tells me Jesus was the greatest listener. And how we can bless people by listening, 
These are ideas from Jesus. One, ask great questions. Two, listen to what they're saying. And three, hear their heart. That's the outline for this morning. Ask great questions, listen to what they're saying, and then hear their heart. First, let's talk about asking great questions. Uh, In his book, Jesus is the Question, uh, Martin P. Koppenhaver says that Jesus asked, I found this fascinating, Jesus asked 307 questions and answered only three of them. Clearly a part of Jesus' way of loving the people around him was to ask good questions and then listen without feeling the pressure of being the hero, or being the closer, being the know-it-all, being the topper, being the, the answer guy. And, and, and just listen without being distracted by the notification that just came in on his smartwatch while they're like mid-sentence. Jesus had this ability to do this, ask great questions. Uh, You and I know how uninspired we are by low-hanging fruit questions by other people. And so we should aim to do a little better than that, right? Uh, uh, Crazy weather we're having, huh? That really doesn't really move anything forward. So let's scrub out low-hanging fruit questions because it doesn't make the list. I want to give you five H's right now of listening, of how you can ask great questions and then listen for the answer. If you want to remember these uh, more easily, I remember them this way. There are five H's, uh, but it's, uh, I remember it in order. Ha, he, he, ho, hu. There you go, right? So here, here's what I mean by the list, all right? Habits. You can ask, hey, so where do, you, where, do, what do you, where do you tend to shop? Where do you tend to work out? Where do you tend to mechanic? Where do you, where do you tend to bank? And just get, just get them talking. Heart, what does that mean? Ask about their key relationships. Or, or ask, what's your favorite fill in the blank? What's your favorite team? Your favorite restaurant? Favorite travel destination? Favorite social cause? Favorite, you know, retirement dream? You got kids? Tell me about your kids. Which is your favorite kid? It's okay. Ask. Just see what they, just see what they say. Uh, uh, what about history? Hey, tell me your story. Did you always live here? You know, where'd you, where, did you, where did you grow up? Or like, tell me about some of the cool things that you've tried. Uh, you can ask about their hobbies. What are the kinds of things that you're, you're into? What do you love to do with your free time? What do you love to you take PTO for? Or, or where, do you, where do you vacation? Or here's the last one. You can ask about hurts and say, hey, how are you doing with that thing? And that, of course, that can be a tender one. And sometimes it's job-related or family-related or... Sometimes it's, it's something of a physical nature, something of an emotional nature. And you and I can, you know, kind of shrink back a little bit from asking about hard things. But don't take your eyes off the opportunity. People tend to be even more vulnerable in times of, I'll give you two times, times of transition and tra- times of tragedy. You want to be the one who asked when that time comes up. So ask great questions. Another thing we can be inspired to do is to listen to the answers. I'll take you to the book of Luke. Uh, there's this great story in chapter 18 of this, uh, this, this beggar. And uh, the beggar was uh, sitting by the side of the road, and he hears this great commotion. And uh, because he's blind, he has to ask the people around him, hey, what's going on? And they say, oh, there's, Jesus just like kind of walked into the neighborhood. And so verse 38 uh, says that the man began shouting. He began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He's just sitting there shouting. And then the Bible says that uh, the, the people around him said, be quiet. Shh. Jeez. And it's not that like it was a library. I don't know what it was. Maybe they thought it was fruitless. Maybe they were just annoyed or something like that. But I would love to just take this as a quick opportunity for a quick reminder that there are people. Remember last week, we prayed for each other as we all prayed to be a blessing to one, two, five, ten other people that God was already assigning us and bringing to mind. So given the size of this room, hundreds and hundreds of people are, are, are ready to be blessed this week because God has chosen in sending you. And I just want you to know something, that many of those people that you and I are called to bless have kept stuffed down inside of them things that... that, that they could have let out, but they just they have kept it in far too long because the people around them convinced them that it wasn't important. They've been convinced. They've been shut down. 
They thought it wasn't worth people's time, or people, people just didn't value their plight, or people felt it was too awkward, didn't know what to say, so they changed the topic, or they just didn't want to be bothered. And so the, the person that you can bless by listening today, they're convinced that their thoughts and feelings are just irrelevant or their needs are too embarrassing to hold out in the light. This is why listening and developing trust go hand in hand. All right, so he's calling for Jesus, and everyone's telling him to be quiet, but the Bible says that he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. I, I just, I love the scene. I think it's just kind of, I think it's just kind of funny picture of this guy sitting in the middle of the sidewalk being a general nuisance and uh, totally unashamed about it. But the guy knows what he wants. And uh, then verse 40 says, when Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. Now, I don't, I don't want you to miss this. Because Jesus is surrounded by, by his posse, right? And they're all talking and yucking it up and doing what they do. And then the whole posse is surrounded by a whole crowd, a crowd of people that's pushing and shoving and calling and asking and, and, and talking and where are we going to get lunch? And he said, all of that stuff, all that stuff is happening. He's cr- traveling with his crowd. He's on the way to Jericho, which is one of the last stops on the way to Jerusalem to participate in the Passover feast. That kind of timing tells us that this is like, you know, this is like, I, you know, I remember my family used to, um, we tried to make an annual habit of walking the Magnificent Mile downtown Chicago uh, the week of Christmas, where there's just tons of people and it's lots of noise and whatever. And, and yeah, there were actually beggars there too, or people, that, you know, homeless or whatever. And you, you just kind of turn to tune a lot of that stuff out just so that you can hear the people that you're walking around with. And it's a busy time and it's a noisy time. And you and I know how busyness and noise contribute to us closing our ears and really honing in on just a few things. In all of that, somehow, in all that commotion, Jesus hears this singular voice. What's up with that? Like, like how does that happen? I got to tell you, I think that this is one of those times where we just see how the level of compassion in a person like Jesus connects their ears to their heart. And you, you just hear it. I don't know that Jesus was crossing through town, planning, looking for someone to heal. But it, 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 just, it just happened. And, and I think that that's true for you and I, that when, when you and I are, are prayed up, we're loaded with compassion, we are spring-loaded to, to bless somebody then you just start picking up on different frequencies, right? Like, it's, it's kind of like when, when you, adults in the room, parents in the room, like, when you and I were teenagers, our parents couldn't figure out how we could, like, press play on a CD and turn it up to 10 and then fall asleep, like, right in front of the boombox, right? But now we're parents. And the faintest whimper from another bedroom in the middle of the night, and we just, like, jack up, jackknife in bed. Sometimes my wife and I do it at the same time. We just look at each other. Okay, and then somebody gets out of bed and they're gonna go track down the noise. Because something, something happens to you and it affects, it affects your hearing. Here's Jesus uh, hearing this guy. He's loaded compassion. That's what we wanna be. And it says, as the man came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asks a question and then he listens. And the answer comes back, Lord, he said, I wanna see. And you saw that coming, right? But you and I are holding Bibles where the top of the paragraph has this header that says Jesus heals a blind man. So, okay, you know, but we, here, here's, here's what I don't want you to miss. We don't want to blow right through this. Notice the question that Jesus asks. What would you like me to do for you? What do you want? It seems like a silly question. And, and sometimes we scholars start to think to ourselves, this is just part of a dramatic buildup, right? Or Jesus, Jesus knew what he wanted specifically, but he was asking the man so that the man could figure out what he wanted and, you know, or something like that. Sometimes Jesus is just ready to ask a question. I think we can be inspired by this. Jesus didn't assume that he knew what people wanted. He didn't assume the questions that people needed answers to. Presumption never builds trust, right? 
presumption never builds greater trust. And so Jesus is simply asking questions and then listening. It reminds me of a, a true story that I heard uh, of a missionary group went to uh, a, a uh, obscure village in India and they went to serve the poor and to do some building for them. And they walked in with all kinds of materials and, and systems and, and plans and skilled workers. And they were just ready to transform that village and, and, and help it get healthy and raise the vitality of it, and, the, and, the, and, they, and they went to the first people they talked to living just like in the slums, and they made their pitch, and they said, we could build you a medical clinic so that your, your hurting and your sick could start to get cared for, or, or, or we could build you a school to provide education so that the next generation could could work their way out of poverty, or we could build you a church if you like. You could gather on the weekends. You could learn about God. So what do you want us to do for you? So far, so good, right? It sounds, it sounds a lot like the question Jesus asked the blind beggar. And the people of the village responded with something that the missionaries were not expecting to hear at all. They said, we, what we really would love for you to build for us is a mailbox. And they're like, medical clinic, school, church, mailbox. Are you sure that the mailbox is all you want? And thankfully, the missionaries didn't just take their ball and go home. But as they listened further, the villagers explained that in India, if you don't have a mailbox, you basically don't have a zip code. And if you don't have a zip code, it basically means you aren't on the map. Doesn't matter if you live in a community of 20,000 people. No zip code, no place on the map. You don't exist. You're not recognized. And if they're not recognized, that excludes them from receiving all, receiving all social services from the government. And so what they were seeking to do is, is essentially have an identity and become a recognized part of their own country. And had the missionaries not asked the question and then just listened, they never would have known that this was the people's greatest need. And it wouldn't have been the first time that a group of missionaries just went in and said, no, we know what you need, and just kind of plunged ahead and did what they had already decided to do. And so that's what they did. And it might sound like a, like a small, simple task to get a mailbox, but, but it wasn't. The missionaries actually, it took them two years to work through the bureaucracy, bureaucracy that, that allowed them to get registered with a zip code. But as the story goes, once they did, the village began to transform. So let me ask, what about you? Is it possible that you have been set to bless somebody else in your life, and you went into that relationship, you went into that conversation having already made up your mind what they needed next before you did any listening at all. I know I've made that mistake. And I think this is, this is why the invention of the gift receipt has gotten so much play over the last few decades, right? <laughs> I know what you want for Christmas. Okay, thanks for the errand. I'll just take it back and you know, get the cash or whatever. But, but, but we do this. Sometimes we don't catch ourselves. Think about the last time that you were, you were uh, you're having a bad day and someone assumed you wanted a hug and gave you a hug that you didn't want. Did you feel like taking the embrace? You've probably more felt like it pushed you away. Think about the last time that you were in a difficult time and somebody assumed that what you needed was a lot of good advice or maybe a Bible verse. That's more of a turnoff, isn't it? And so the, what we're talking about here is knowing the needs begins with just listening. Ask great questions, and then, and then listen to what they're saying. And, and then here's one more idea for you this week. Is hear their heart. Hear their heart. Those are, that's our three. Jesus said uh, in verse 42, 43, Jesus said, all right, Receive your sight, your faith has healed you. And then get this, instantly the man could see. And he followed Jesus, praising God. I love, but I, in my imagination, the noise level of the guy never goes down. He just, he goes from calling out to Jesus to telling him what he wants 
and then he's just going to follow right along with all the other seeing people, throw the, throw the, set, the, set the seeing eye dog free and throw the stick aside, and I'm just going to follow Jesus now, praising God. It says that all, all who saw it praised God too. What an amazing story. And, and, and I'm so glad that Jesus could hear this guy's voice in the hustle and the bustle in a very noisy place in the midst of a very busy life. I'm so glad that Jesus was the kind of listener that wasn't going to be swayed from listening, even though several other people were like, let me just do you a favor here, Jesus. Disregard, you know, nothing to see here. It's just a nobody. Nothing you haven't heard before. I'm so glad that Jesus dialed in and listened because imagine the miracle for this guy. What's it going to be like to go back home? What's it going to be like to get a restart to his life? Imagine the transformation that follows the blessing. That's the dream that we have for people in our lives as well, isn't it? That if God will allow us to bless, that a transformation is going to take place along the way. Our God is going to become their God. And what I think is worth paying attention to here is this line. I'll put it back on the screen. It's where Jesus says, your faith has healed you. What I want you to notice here is that when Jesus hears what the man is saying, he has access to what the man believes. You see the connection? That is a vital connection that can be made whenever you and I are willing to stop and listen and do better than just catch their words, but hear their heart. Uh, just, just this last week, I was talking with a friend that I have made uh, at the gym, and we were talking about uh, uh, habits. It was, I was, we were talking about coffee. And I was like, you, are you a coffee drinker? What's your, what's your, what's your coffee story? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, he's like, I'm a pot a day drinker. <laughs> you know those guys? And uh, I was like, something about him, just like, oh, not surprised, you know, I'm a pot a day drinker. I make some in the morning and my wife has a cup and then I go work out, come home and I finish the rest of the pot. I don't know, I, don't know. I sleep like a baby. Okay, you're one of those people. But then he said, uh, my wife tried to give, get me to give up coffee for Ash Wednesday. And I said, no way, not happening. And he said it with a smile. I chuckled. We moved along with the conversation. So I was listening. But, but then I heard some things. Like one of the things I heard is that he's probably Catholic. And it just makes me wonder how that's working out for him. So it's like kind of put a make a note there, put a pin. Another thing that I heard is that Jesus is not worth his coffee. Like, that's where he's at. It's like, hey, good to know. Good to know. I, I mean, you never know what's Jesus going to ask me to do with that. I don't know. I didn't call him to the carpet right then. Or I just, I just I'm, I'm getting to know the guy. I want to hear what's on the inside. And that's, that's basically the gist here is that if we're listening, we can hear more than what's being spoken. We can pick up on those things that are underneath the surface. We can hear what they worship, what they say they worship, and what they actually worship. We can hear what their hopes are. We can hear what they're all about. We can hear what, what, they, what they're after. We can, we, can, we can get much better guidance in how to bless people just ask great questions, listen to what they're saying, and then try to hear their heart. I, want, I don't want you to forget something. We established this last week. You're chosen for this. You can be an excellent middleman between heaven and earth, a great branch, if we just concentrate on, on being receptive to people. God can help you hear what he wants you to hear. God is excited for you to bless other people. He's excited about that. He won't let you down. He wants to use you. And he can help you to hear what you need to hear so that you can bless in the way that he is excited for you to bless. And so how I want to wrap this morning up uh, is I want to give you, I just want to give you a really important reminder. And then I want to give you a really big challenge. Okay? The important reminder is this, is that we're talking about Jesus. Jesus is all-powerful, and he's always ready to help. 
You know, I think about moments like we had in worship this morning where we, we sing things like, like uh, uh, you move the mountains. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe you do it again. You made a way when there's no way. I believe you do it again. And I don't know, I don't know about you, but when, when I'm singing songs, when I'm singing words like that, there are Sundays when I am hoping that God will do the miraculous again in places as far away as Ukraine. And there are other Sundays, I'm praying God will do the miraculous. He doesn't have to look past my own busted heart to do something amazing. And what I, what I want to remind you of today is that as you and I talk about being a blessing to other people, we can pin our hopes on God for them. for what she's needing, for what he's become fatigued in praying for. That there's hope. That better days come when Jesus is involved. That he can help people who can't see past tomorrow reverse engineer their lives from the glory of heaven and a glorious future and know that things are gonna be okay. And God can do more than they expected. Jesus gave a blind man sight. I mean, what can't he do? He can do it all. And when we bless, all we're seeking to do is make a divine, arrange a divine appointment between somebody with great need and a God who can do it all. And right in the middle, we middlemen, we just bless. Try to scoot them closer and scoot them closer and give them a taste for heaven because we believe in a transformation that could follow any blessing. So that's the reminder. Are you reminded? Nod your heads. You're reminded. Here's the challenge. The challenge is try betting on listening this week to, to people as a premier way to, to bless. Trust that listening is something that we can do that will usher in the spectacular in the midst of the regular. And I wanna pray very specifically about what you're gonna go and do this week. And I wanna encourage you to take a prayer posture right now. Just bow your head, close your eyes. Permission granted to use your hands. If right now God's giving you faces and names that you need to write down on the margin of your notes or on something, I want you to do that right now. Heads bowed, eyes closed, but if you're pulling out your phone, because you already can think of somebody who hasn't gotten any of your listening time and this is gonna be the week. And you need to start the meeting at work 15 minutes earlier, then just go ahead, arrange your schedule right now. If you need to make a reminder for yourself to text somebody that you haven't reached out to in a while, friendship you've neglected, it's, it's, it's a widow, it's, it's, it's somebody who's going through a hard thing. I, you and God know. And hey, right now, just use this time and get busy. But I'm going to just lead us all in prayer right now. And just say, God, you're, you're the one that we represent. You're, you're the one with the answers. You're the one with the power. And your sons and daughters, we, we, we want to ask that you would put a name in the slot where there was no name. Give us the face of the person. We can just listen to this week. God, we want to be ready to pause and listen to somebody this week having no prior knowledge. I just pray that you would do that. Would you use your spirit to just kind of, kind of thump our ear, tap us on the shoulder in a moment when we feel like rushing through to just pause and just be receptive and help that person feel heard I want to pray that you would, we could count on you to alert us in the moment to show that person that we're listening, to have an undistracted posture. Pray that you give us the presence of mind to silence any noises or distractions and, and not try to multitask this time. I pray that you would remind us to relax in a moment when we feel the pressure to just move right through and rush along. And, and I pray, God, in, the, in that moment that we'll depend on you to reveal to us whatever it is that you want us to hear. You open our ears. 
Use this, God. Help us to ask great questions. Listen to what they're saying and hear their heart. And gosh, while we're praying for great stuff, I want to give you a second challenge to not just listen to the people in our lives, but to listen to the places where we go. So we think about our schools. We think about our workplaces, we think about our neighborhoods, we think about our stores, our gym, our community, wherever it is that we're going. What, what are they saying? What are they feeling? What, what do they believe? I want to, this is a challenge if you're part of a heritage group. I know many of us are, especially if you're a leader. Imagine if this week we saved a few times to just talk about together and pray together about the places where we go and what we're hearing when we go to those places. We could talk and, and pray through our impressions and the needs that we sense in those arenas. And wouldn't it be awesome if God used your whole group to bless a person or a family or, or more in those places because we listened and, and, and God revealed. Jesus, this is our confidence that you are remaking us to bless other people and to love doing it and sense the heavenly purpose in our lives when we bless every day in every way. And we're telling you today that if, if we bless, we know you'll transform because our whole life and lifestyle is hinged on you. We have bet the farm that you are true and that you love and that you're powerful and that you have a desire for people that you've put in our path. There is nothing more exciting for us than to watch you work. We want you to be the vine. We want to be a great branch. We want to be the kind of branch that's just loaded with fruit because you're, you're growing, 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 doing new things. And we get to be the one that makes the transfer of life and health and just heavenly nutrition into the lives of the people who need it right now. God, we pray that you would do great things in our midst. Help us to bless like you've blessed us. Show us what it means to listen this week. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Heritage, I love you. I'm really excited to hear what comes out of this week. Share stories, testify, and hey, as you go today, as you stand and go, there's probably someone near you who is been just as bad as listening in the past as you have. Why not introduce yourself and give each other a second chance? You're dismissed.